as they did their spawning migration from Lake Memphremagog to the Clyde River. And I was frustrated by my equipment. I was using a hacked GoPro and getting into the water, but I couldn't go very deep. It was not very safe. Um, the pools were too fast moving and uh, I couldn't really get good footage in the lake. So I did some research and I found um, a potential solution. There's a prosumer underwater drone. There's some new technology out on the market. And the prosumer means that a uh, consumer and a professional model. So it's sort of a lightweight portable model, has 4K video, does 12 meg megabyte stills. It has omnidirectional movement. This drone is actually pretty freaking cool to say the least. Um, and one of the most incredible aspects of it is it has an active headset. So it engages a drone through head movements. Um, it has lights, a really decent depth rating at 100 meters, can run in cold water, and it holds a long charge. So I procured some funding from the University of Maine to rent the equipment. I wasn't sure if I wanted to make the whole, um, to actually go in the whole way, and I got a grant to rent it. The drone arrived, and it had technical issues. Uh, and I had to send it back for repairs, and it kind of stunk because the weather was perfect to do the field work. Um, and that's okay. The drone company gave me extra time. So with that extra time, I ended up coming up with a plan to share this technology with people. I created um, some drone demonstration events on the Stillwater River at the university. I conducted field trials at home near our local stream. And then I worked with University of Maine Arctic Char graduate researchers in a very special pond called Floods Pond. This is the unfiltered water source for the nearby city of Bangor. And it's only one of 60 unfiltered water source sites in the United States. This water is very clean. So now I'd like to show you a couple minutes of um, some of the drone trials that I conducted in Maine and Vermont. And we start in Vermont on the lake during a massive flood event. And as you can see, it was really difficult to see anything with the drone. Um, everything was churned over, the water was moving really fast. So it was um, not the best field work experience that I've ever had. Not the most productive, I should say. But someday I will go back. And now here we are on Marsh Stream in Monroe, which is near my home. And we were practicing with the drone using the, un, using the headset to sort of see what we, could, what we could see. And the water was moving a lot slower and it was clearer. Then I conducted some demos at school. And this is using the VR headset. Where we actually see what the person running the headset sees. And then we moved to Flood's Pond with the Arctic Char researchers. And one of the most difficult things was using the headset in the boat and not falling out of it because <laughs> it's a little disorienting. But they were checking the fish trap, which is a, a trap that they use to collect Arctic Char and brook trout and whoever else happens to swim in. And then the um, researchers. Um, catch and study them at the station, and then they release them back into the pond afterwards. Here we did a dive, and this is an incredible dive because we went to the bottom of this pond's floor, and we think we are potentially the first people to have ever seen this, which is really special.
And then we did the Arctic char release and brook trout release and the char moved really fast. In fact, I had to slow that footage down because they just, he just shot right past me. And here's the brook trout, which was a little bit easier to film. <laughs> And this gives me an opportunity just to say thank you to all the people that helped me actually um, get this footage. And uh, it, it, was a, it was a really incredible experience. Um, some of the feedback that I received from participants, uh, most of it was so positive and actually incredibly enthusiastic. Um, one person said, when I tried using the drone with a VR headset, the accelerometer controls felt much more intuitive and smoother. It made it feel like I was swimming under the surface of the water, able to look around and explore the river environment. Overall, I'm excited to see how this visual approach can be used in storytelling and research about the largely hidden worlds of aquatic habitats and what goes on under the water surface. Another person said, I put on the VR headset, and it was the easiest thing in the world. All you had to do was steer your head and run the throttle forwards and backwards. Another person said, I was super excited when I put on the headset. I never have never done VR before. It was like two experiences in one. Um, another person remarked that it would be very helpful, helpful for choosing an ice coring spot and to have footage of what happens underwater for outreach. So looking ahead, what I, my plans are is to try to procure funding for an outfitted drone kit, to continue my collaboration with researchers, especially on the main eDNA project, and to uh, do work on coastal and inland sites in Maine, and then to share this immersive experience with our community, especially with the youth. And this brings up a very important point there's a need to care for the environment in using this tool. Um, and it's important to recognize and promote responsibilities for operating the underwater drone in sensitive ecological areas. Because if you go too fast and you bang it on the floor of whatever uh, body of water you're in, you, you'll, you'll disturb it. And so there's a certain level of care that I think needs to be taken. And with that, I just wanna say thank you again to everybody who helped me um, conduct this research. It's been a blast and I look forward to doing a lot more of it and hopefully it'll become part of my dissertation. So there you have it. <laughs>